Hi everyone, in this video we will be unboxing and reviewing a pick kit for in circuit debugger and programmer from microchip I recently bought from element 14 uh, in Australia and that cost me um, I guess a little bit more than 130 Australian dollars um, but one odd thing about my order was that let me see if I can show you I searched for pick it for and there seems to be two products uh, exactly identical manufacturer part numbers same description same availability same deliver options and different prices so that was a little bit old i obviously ordered the cheaper one i don't know why this is the case maybe it's for bulk orders or something like that if you want to order more than one i'm not quite sure but yeah i just went for the cheaper one so if you are ordering pick it for from a catalog supplier maybe this is again some common information that i'm missing uh, you need to check for your prices for the same product so because that's odd anyways going back to our product first i'm really excited about this but um before opening this one i'll just go through a bit of history so first one is um i believe it's a picket to knockoff of some sort i acquired it from somewhere in europe uh, maybe 15 years ago maybe more i'm not entirely sure and i only remember good things about this uh, look at this zip socket mm, so good really early days of me starting programming picks super excited about it and it was absolutely delight to use zero headaches and i just soldered on this uh horrible female headers in here too to do some in circuit programming as well and uh, not use the zip socket all the time even though it's great um but over the years it it became harder and harder to find um the right software for it and um obviously it wasn't supporting the newer picks so i had to switch to our good old picket tree which i was expecting you know because this is like a this is obviously a knockoff um whereas like some solder work that's done by hand it just you don't know who is the manufacturer so i thought this thing would work much better than this but it wasn't the case um if you had some um experience with picket tree you know what i'm talking about um but again i have used it for i don't know six seven years perhaps um still it, it uh, supports uh, almost every pick out there it's um uh it works has quirks but uh i hope i'm done with this so that's the end of our history lesson now let's start unpacking our pick it for okay so we have a nice cool black box here which is great none of that plastic rubbish because i remember the pick it tree wasn't all you know rubbed in plastic so i'm happy that they this time replaced it with a uh, cardboard box that's a good choice these are probes yeah there we go okay on the box is there anything interesting no just a microchip address and stuff pick it for yeah it's just a black cardboard box no nothing interesting we open it up uh that's nice okay so yeah this is the picket four and so so let's put it aside let's remove this part and we have a usb cable I thought it would be USB-C at this uh, day and age, but still no, not a big deal though, not a problem, not a problem, we can with that. And some stickers, yeah, okay, and that's it, nothing else, no documentation, no manuals, none of the rubbish like that, okay. All right, so I'm obviously not going to use the stickers for now. Um, I remember PK3 was coming with some sort of connection diagram, something like that, something simple. This doesn't have any of it. And okay, the USB cable looks all right. Let's um, give it a go. All right, I used a bit of creative license and uh, cheated a little bit and uh, play with the PK4 after the unboxing, but um, I'm hoping it's going to result in a, a better and fair review video so um let's look at our case first uh apparently some design effort went into this and um 
the final product looks really good. It's it's cool. So on the front of it, we have a bit of a brushed metal face plate sort of thing, and the rest of the case is plastic. Um, it feels a little bit cheap to be honest, but there is nothing obviously wrong with that. And um, maybe I'm just being a little bit pedantic about this, but um, uh, yeah, it is there. So on, aside from that, on the front of it, we have the metal plate. Uh, we have the MP Lab logo and microchip logo, and <clears throat> the uh, programmer on the go button is hidden underneath this plate. So you just need to press it to activate the programmer on the go functionality. So we have this LED on the front as well, and and the colors are just indicates the status of the pick kit. So on the back of it, we don't have anything, just the serial number of the device. And on the side, we have the micro SD card slot, which is great for programmer on the go function, which wasn't there before in the uh, PK3. And um, and it's good for programming larger PICs, you know, it's, uh, I, can, I can see definitely the use for that. Uh, on the top, we have the USB micro connection. I was expecting a USB-C connection, but I understand it's a low cost programmer. If they put USB-C socket there, they would probably um they just didn't want to go into the all the usb into usb c implementation anyways just it's a bit of an overkill really at this uh level of programmers so um it's okay there's nothing wrong with it there's still a lot of devices using usb micro so that's fine uh we have a little hole here right, right next to the usb connector which is the emergency reset button i'm not sure what exactly it resets but i'm just uh, guessing it's wiping out the firmware or um, just in case you break the firmware somehow uh, which could be quite useful in that in that case and some other holes on the bottom corner as well just for like long yard connections as usual with uh, the PK3 we had the same stuff over here I think this is a much better design I can see how it can be used in production environments just to you know, hook it up to somewhere so it just doesn't get lost. And at the bottom we have the connectors. Again, I'll just use the Picky Tree as the reference. So we have uh, we had six, six pins on Picky Tree. In Picky Four we have eight pins. And um, I don't think it's all of them are used, but uh, it's um, just for forward compatibility. So the the programmer in general is uh, they they did like a couple of design choices really well to uh, keep it forward compatible. And um, yeah, you can program all the pick kits, um, all the pick chips out there with this one as well as your AVR. So the reason that I bought it is just I wanted to experiment with uh, some of the AVRs while still staying on the pick world. So that this this device definitely gives you that ability, and also it's uh, a great debugger as well. Um, and that's pretty much all it is on the case, really. Uh, let's hook it up and give it a try, and then just I'm just gonna open our MP lab as well. So as soon as you hook it up, you know, the pick it for, um, I'll just show you again, just connect it back. Um, you immediately see the notification in MP lab. So the experience, the connection between pick it for and MP lab isn't like pick it three at all. I had like only at the beginning whilst downloading the firmware i had a bit of an usb issues i just disconnected it connected it once after it downloaded the firmware it seemed to lost the connection and but after that i had zero connection problems with pick it for it's just definitely the issues that plagues pick it three are not there it's all of them are fixed and actually you will feel that um it's hard to you know you tell but um like MP Lab works much more stable now, so um, I'm guessing maybe some of the issues that I was having with MP Lab was uh, the result of uh, the connection problems between itself and Picky Tree. So none of them are happening anymore. One interesting thing, though, after I spoiled my MP Lab with Picky Four and enjoyed it so much, I just wanted to hook up the Picky Tree and um, try it again just to compare a few things. And I was faced with a Java error, which I have never seen before. I didn't dig into it, but um, at this moment in time, um, my picky tree isn't working with MPLab anymore. I'm not sure why, but um, I will just, if I find something else, I will let you know. 
Um, and if, if you know anything about it, just let me know in the comments. Um, okay, so yeah, let's, um, let's set up our project to um, work with Pickit 4. It's quite straightforward, really. You just right click on the project, go to properties. It is very simple, very similar to Pickit 3 in many, many aspects of it. Uh, there are a couple of differences, but we will touch them. So you just need to set your connected hardware tool, which in this case, I've already set it as Pickit 4. And the other one is you just go to the Pickit 4 section. Um, one change is about the powering options. So previously in Pickit 3, there was a drop down here. Now there is no drop down anymore, but it tells you um, in the option description the ranges, it's 2.3 to 3.5 volts, and you can um, put up to three digits after the dot. So um, that's a little bit more sensitive. Having said that, I have tried to put it at five volts with five volt picks. Um, it's not like stepping it up. Um, then you just set it to five volts. It just provides whatever is available on the USB. And um, that is just, um, and it's not upset about it like Picket Tree, so it doesn't suffer from the same power-based um, connection issues that Picket Tree was suffering from. Uh, they have been quite smart about it. So yeah, it's it will be nice to have a drop down here just to show you a couple of um, viable powering options, um, but it's okay. Um, I think this is much better. I can see the functionality here, and I know that these um, Java UIs could be quite daunting to make a drop down component with editing. So I know why they didn't invest it into that, but that's okay. It's pretty good. And now you press apply and that is pretty much it when it comes to power. A new option category that you would have is pick it for tool options. Um, a couple of things we have here. One of them is like the uh, LED bright LED brightness. I imagine that's for this LED on the front of it. I changed, I tried changing it. It was like, I guess it was five by default, but I haven't really noticed whether the brightness has changed or not. Um, and one major difference is that um, once it's done programming, Picket 4 doesn't release the uh, clock and the uh, data pins. So, but you can just, you know, um, configure it from here. You can just keep them pull up or just if you set them to none, the configuration to none, it will be releasing them if you, you can just pull them down or pull them up and then you can enter a resistor value up to 50 kilo ohms here so it's set at 4.7 kilo ohms by default but you can change it and there's also a speed option here so in normal speed like you will immediately notice that this device the picket 4 is uh much faster than picket 3. it's not like twice faster i'm talking about like Obviously, I haven't measured it, but the ballpark figure that so far that I have seen is like it's 100 times faster than Picket Tree. So it's it's really, really fast. Uh, it doesn't make any difference if you're, you know, just uh, programming baseline uh, mid-range series picks. But if you are programming um, high-end picks, 32-bit uh, picks, um, larger picks with more memory and more flash, uh, and if you're just producing, I don't know, like 100 of these units, it definitely makes a difference and uh even while debugging it just um it, it's a different experience the speed has vastly improved and you will immediately notice that it's it's seriously faster uh one other thing that comes with speed perhaps is that this it's already getting warmer uh it's not like untouchable or noticeably hot but it's warm so that's something that i had never noticed with picket 3 which was like pretty cold all the time uh, this thing gets a little bit warm but again it's not it's just not a problem at all um before we get into programming like one thing that just really bothered me is the usb cable that they have supplied with it so you will just immediately notice that um there has been some cost cutting here which is not the end of the world this usb cable works um i'm pretty sure like it will just work fine for your case as well but uh, they definitely went for the bit of a cheaper option here. Uh, I would be changing this USB cable uh, because I just like to, um, in, in case of, you know, USB connection issues, stuff like that, I really like to use the USB socket on the PicKit. 
um, rather than just plugging it out of the computer. And this doesn't seem to fit quite well. It does, but you can notice that it does. I tried it with different cables, uh, with premium cables. It obviously the experience is better. There's nothing wrong with the plug. It's just the the cable that provided provided is a little bit on the cheaper end. So okay. And let's let's program a couple of picks. So this is just gonna bring over my TFT driving project with a pick 18 F series here. And this is a this is a board that I've actually has the ICSV pins for PK3. So one of the good things with this one is that it's obviously pin compatible and this marker um, um, shows the indicates the first pin and uh, it's the MCLR pin and it's just pin compatible with PK3. The other thing I was worried about is that especially when you have ICSV headers like this closer to other components and all this stuff, I was worried hmm, we'll just because this is definitely a little bit thicker, like it's physically a little bit different to picket tree the dimensions um so you might still have issues because they just sheer the number of pins are uh, eight pins right it's more and this this is a little bit thicker but it's they they give it like enough space so even in tight spaces it will still most likely be compatible unless you have a real real tight design around the programming pins but um that's pretty good so we just pop it in there Okay, and yeah, I just set it to normal. And this time I don't have to edit this video because the programming is instantaneous. Let's, let's try that. It's just the build and now it's connecting to the programmer. Okay, so we have the um, warning dialog that's about the power. Yeah, we are sure we know what we're doing and it's done. So. That's very fast. That's uh, I'm really impressed by the overall speed. And um, let's try another project that we have. Maybe the Blinky project. I'm just gonna set this as main project. Set as main project. So we'll just pop this out. And um, now we probably need to visit the project properties as well. So this pick 10 F we had before, uh, just the Blinky project with the pick 10 F220. So just going real baseline now and let's see what could possibly happen with that. And we're just gonna connect the MCLR. I luckily color coded all these cables here so it's easier to connect. MCLR, VDD, our ground over here we have a mess that will do and look at that our uh circuit immediately start working because it has 3.3 volts on it now so this is something that you need to be careful about because when the led is um yellow it's powering it and now it's powering it so we're just going to connect programming data and clock so data and clock yeah there you go. This is a good old ICSP, but this thing it has many protocols. It, it supports JTAG, it supports your AVRs, all sorts of stuff like that. Just and all forward compatible, so that's great. Okay, so let's have a look at our project. Um, we have the pick kit board there, which is good, and we have the power as well for five volts. Okay, so power at five volts. Now I'm gonna try. I'll try to show you. Um, what is the voltage level on this one? But let's let's stick with five volts for now. Supply it. And let's program our pick. Okay, then the LED get brighter as long as it just switch to five volts. And one thing, if you have noticed. Unlike PIC3, it didn't download the firmware for uh, PIC10 FF, uh, this, uh, this PIC10 F series PIC. So um, apparently there is more memory in PIC4 and it just um, because with PIC3 every time you program a different device, it, uh, it was downloading the firmware over and over again. So if you switch between projects with different devices, every time it meant a firmware download, but with PIC4, 
uh, I think the first time I programmed it, it just uh, didn't require a firmware update. It only took a firmware update once, really. And um, probably for this, you know, 10F, like 12F um, baseline series, uh, the firmware already um, contains a number of picks, so you don't have to download a firmware for each individual device. And that's, that's great, because that was definitely um, a bit of a hassle, especially if you are debugging multiple projects and like different um, picks at the same time. Now it's just much easier. Um, now let's look at this USB voltage. Is it real five volts? Because I'm I'm sure that I know for a fact that our my USB is not supplying five volts. But let's give it a try. Let's open our multimeter over here and see what we have. Okay, I'm just gonna do my best to get some some readings here. Just pop it in the camera and let's give it a try. Okay, we are at the ground and we see now it's 4.6 volts. So it's definitely not 5 volts. But um, this is just an indication that it doesn't have a step up um, regulator, but that's fine for programming purposes. This is all fine as long as it can drive MCLR high. Uh, we don't really need any other higher voltage than that while programming. And if that's the case, you can always, you know, um, you can always uh, power your circuit with an external power supply. So it is definitely another problem. Um, so this picket currently is um, connected to a USB hub and that usb hub is connected to my keyboard and um it's also i'm working on a virtual machine that's uh with fedora 36 operating system on it and um it's working on windows so in this kind of really uh horrible usb connection i didn't have any connection problems at all with picket for or I didn't have any problems with MP Lab like crashing or um, um, exiting or you know all sorts of MP Lab issues you are familiar with with Picket Tree. None of these happened while using Picket Four. So I'm particularly impressed by the how robust the devices and uh, how they improve the um, overall development experience. So uh, it's also obvious that they are not investing in. I don't think they, they need to invest in Picky Tree and all of its pesky connection issues anymore. So um, unfortunately, it looks like Picky 4 is the way to go forward. Um, but uh, the good news is this is a great programmer. It's very versatile. It's a very wide device support for all kinds of microcontrollers. And uh, um, it's definitely uh, pays for itself. It's, it's, it's a low cost programmer after all. But uh, with AVRs and PICs, you can definitely go even lower cost options. And some of these programmers, those two, three dollar programs are really doing a great job for particular chips they're um, targeting. But uh, this pick it for is definitely, um, it's definitely worth the value. Uh, highly recommend it. If you're especially doing pick work and then also want to do some AVR work or also doing AVR work. And if you're working with MP Lab, uh, that's a great companion for MPLab, really. It definitely changed my opinion on MPLab. It's just, that was completely a surprise because um, I thought it's just MPLab. Uh, most of the issues, I didn't know that they were caused by Picky Tree. They were apparently caused by Picky Tree. And um, it's a different, definitely a different development experience with this one. So let me know if you have any questions or comments. And I'm going to make a couple of more in-depth videos about Picket4 as well, but especially on the programmer on the go functionality and um, uh, programming uh, some of the AVRs perhaps. Uh, let me know if there is a particular um, kind of device you want to see, how, how the programming experience looks like with Picket4, and I'll be happy to follow that up. And um, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.